Okay, freshman physical education class, uh, we've been talking about the FIT principle. By now, everyone knows that uh, the FIT principle is used as exercise prescription, so that you exercise in order to achieve optimal health. Um, F stands for frequency, I for intensity, T for time, and the other T, type. So, frequency. How many days a week should you participate in moderate intensity exercise as compared to vigorous? So far we've just talked in generalities and now we want to separate into two categories so that we meet the standards for each. The moderate intensity activity should be occurring every day. Um, going for a bike ride after dinner, going for a walk, walking the dogs before you come to school in the morning, uh, helping with yard work, uh, and that would be push mowing the lawn, not, uh, not actually riding a, a riding lawnmower. As we get into fall, it might be raking leaves. Uh, going to the holiday world and, and going to the park and walking around and riding the rides and going to the water park afterwards. That would all be considered moderate intensity activity. So we need to do moderate intensity activity every day for optimal health. Vigorous activity needs to take place three times a week for optimal health. We're going to talk more about the standard for how, how hard, how vigorous uh, as we move toward intensity. The I in FIT stands for intensity, and moderate intensity activity is represented by approximately 40 to 60 percent of your heart rate reserve. You'll understand what heart rate reserve is shortly. Vigorous intensity exercise is 70 to 85 percent of heart rate reserve. Time, moderate intensity should. Uh, you should be involved in moderate intensity activity 30 to 60 minutes most every day. Vigorous intensity, you should be involved for a minimum of 20 minutes. Now it can be more and it can be up to 60 minutes. You actually gain more health benefits by increasing your time up to that threshold. But after 60 minutes, you really have to weigh your time invested for the results you want. And all of that is based on your goals of participating in the activity. And of course, all, all the exercise that we're talking about here is aerobic exercise or cardiovascular exercise. In order to determine, we're going to focus today on the intensity of exercise. And in order to determine if we're working hard enough, we use the elevation in our heart rate as a gauge. So we have to be familiar with various heart rates in order to determine if in order to calculate target heart rate and then know what we're doing when we take our pulse after our activity and determine if we've been in our target heart rate range. So before we can determine target heart rate, we have to calculate our maximum heart rate. And this is actually called age predicted maximum heart rate. We do this by using a base of 220 and subtracting our age. We'll do those calculations here in just a moment. Resting heart rate is also another heart rate figure that we need to know in order to calculate target heart rate. Resting heart rate is best taken in the morning before you get out of bed. That way there's no influence of activity or influence of foods you've eaten on your heart rate. For instance, if you wake up in the morning and you drink something that has caffeine in it, that can have uh, an effect on your heart rate. So in order to get your true heart rate, you do it right when you get up in the morning, before you get out of bed, the best uh, thing to do, your, your, a pulse that's very easy to detect is that carotid pulse in your neck and you should count for 30 seconds and then double that number and that will give you beats per minute for resting. We also need to know what our heart rate reserve is and that is calculated by taking your maximum heart rate and subtracting your resting heart rate and this gives us a figure called heart rate reserve and I abbreviate that in all our documentation as HRR. Once we achieve, once we know or have calculated what our heart rate reserve is, then we're ready to move on and calculate our target heart rate because target heart rate is 70 to 85 percent of heart rate reserve. After we do that calculation though, we always have to add resting back in. So let's do our calculations now. Most of you here is uh, early in the school year as freshmen. Most of you are 14 years of age. So we're going to take that base of 220 and subtract your age. So for you guys, that ends up being 
206 beats per minute. And we're talking about the number of, every figure we talk about here is beats per minute. How many times does the heart beat in one minute period of time? Uh, the older you get, the higher the age that you would be subtracting from a, uh, to the base of 220. So I want you to think about what happens with your maximum heart rate as you age. Uh, 206 beats per minute is, your, is the maximum heart rate for most everyone in freshman physical education. But if you're 15, it's 205 beats per minute. Now, resting. We have to know our resting heart rate. And I want you to calculate that maybe two or three mornings in a row and uh, take the average of those mornings that you did it. For purposes of showing you how to calculate and get to target heart rate, we're going to use 80 beats per minute as resting heart rate. Average resting heart rate uh, for, for most people is somewhere in a range between 60 and 90 beats per minute. So we'll go with 80 for our example here. Now, heart rate reserve is calculated by taking your maximum heart rate of 206, if you're 14 years of age, and you subtract your resting heart rate. So that you're an individual who's 14 years of age with a uh, resting pulse of 80 beats per minute would have a heart rate reserve of 126 beats per minute. Now, we've already talked about that target heart rate. This is when we, we want to be exercising vigorously a minimum of three times a week for 20 minutes, for a 20 minute period of time. That's how long we want to keep our heart rate elevated into target. So that is 70 to 85% of heart rate reserve. And anytime you're going to put a percentage in an equation, you guys all know that you move the decimal point two places to the left. So it would be 0.7 and 0.85 to get our target heart rate range. So we're going to take 126, which is our heart rate reserve, times 0.7. Eighty-eight point two. If we have a decimal in the equation, we have to have one decimal in the answer, and now we have to add resting back in. So that's one hundred sixty-eight point two beats per minute. Now, there's no such thing as two tenths of a heartbeat. The heart contracts altogether or not at all. So you know the rule on that. Point four and down, you round down or if it's 0.5 or higher, you round up. So this would round to 168 beats per minute. So the lower end of the target heart rate range for an individual who is 14 years of age with an 80 beats per minute as they're resting would have a lower target heart rate. The lower end of their target heart rate would be 168 beats per minute. Then we need to find the upper range, which is 85% of heart rate reserve. So we take 126 times 0.85. Few decimals in the equation, so we have two in the answer. So we have 106.5. Again, we need to add resting back in, just like we did for the 70%. So we add 80 beats per minute back in. So there's no such thing as five tenths of a heartbeat, and since it's 0.5, we want to round up to 187. So this 14-year-old with a resting pulse or heart rate of 80 beats per minute, its target heart rate range is 168 to 187 beats per minute. So when I stop you after activity in physical education class and I have you find your pulse in your carotid artery or when we're wearing the heart rate monitors, you want to see, you want to count when we do our six-second count palpating our pulse in our neck, at least 16 because we do the six-second count and as high as 18 or 19. And then when we wear the, uh, the heart rate monitors, of course, all you have to do is, is, is look at the watch to determine how, how elevated your heart rate is. So this is how high we want to keep our heart rate for 20 minutes, three times a week for optimal health. If we 
We can benefit from working more vigorously, but when we work more vigorously, we're no longer tapping into the metabolic system of aerobic metabolism. We're beginning to get a crossover to a metabolic system called anaerobic metabolism. And you can only do that for a limited period of time. And aerobic activity needs to last for 20 minutes. So that's why we want to work in this heart rate range.